What's going on? What's going on? It's your man back again. It's Chris B, aka Buzz, with another video to share. This time I only got one video for y'all. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, Stephen A. Smith uh, and the hell he's been getting from the Democrats and the liberal media people uh, for letting them know basically the truth about what's going on and their tactics on how they're trying to go about winning an election. <laughs> now, Dale, I damn sure usually don't agree with Stephen A. Smith on a lot of things, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, I get where he's coming from. I guess in his mind, he thinks that the Democrats all play fair and square, but little does he know these people play for keeps. And by hook or crook, they're going to do everything in their power to stop Trump from trying to win this election. And really, that's the ball game right there. It's stopping the steal, in my opinion, because I don't think they can beat Trump on the issues anyway. And we definitely got a contrast of presidencies to lay in before you and lay in front of you so you can see for yourself that Everything was better under Trump. Everybody knows that. You know, even if you don't like Trump, you don't like oh, how he, some of the same, some of the things he says, you still know in your heart of hearts that uh, things were a lot better under Trump. Even the liberals that hated Trump and was on media every day that was making money, they knew. But, uh, I think, you know, Stephen A. Won't been wanting to talk politics for a while. Uh, that's why a lot of people had turned away from Sports Center because they was trying to go uh, woke center. And look how that turned out. Because me personally, you know, I used to watch ESPN I for, what, 30 some years. You know, I still uh, watch it here and there, but not as much as I used to. There's a, there's a lot more important issues. I noticed, I damn sure noticed that watching sports and being involved in sports or like a fanatic about it that distracts you from everything else that's going on in the world today. So at least 10, about 10 so years ago, I made a, a conscious decision, you know, to lower the temperature on my sports intake and raise the temperature on my geopolitical <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I just think with the Stephen A situation, uh, uh, I guess he's getting hell in the handbasket from some of his friends, but he's just telling the truth to these uh, Democrats about the whole situation with Trump. You know, you, if, to the common person that's looking with some common sense and rational, you can see what's going on and what they're trying to do with this lawfare against Trump. It's not nothing new. They've done this before. But they're just taking it to a whole new level level with Trump because they know that when he gets back in there, I believe he's going to uh, tell the, the federal government, you're fired. <laughs> and he knows that he already said he knows exactly who the, the swamp is, those who knew, who not, are not named. Sorry today, I can't talk today for some reason. What's going on? I'm stamming, I'm nervous or something. God, shoot, <laughs> got me bad, y'all. But yeah, uh, Stephen A. Uh, was just mentioning things that the Democrats are doing that they should be concerned about. You know what I'm saying? And I think that even deep down, some Democrats that may, uh, some Clinton Democrats or still some Kennedy Democrats, they know that this way of winning or trying to win is not a good look because the next thing, it could be you. The things that they're pulling on Trump. You know, it started a long time ago with these radical judges and these activist judges that are put on these benches to where they go after their political enemies. 
And it's definitely not fair because, you know, the people want to, us, the, the we the people, sometimes you want to believe in hope. You want to believe in the thought of you have, can have hope. And I think a lot of the times the powers that be, they use that against us by trying to manufacture hope to the people. But then the, at the last hour, snatch it away or promise you hope forever. And they never give it to you. But the problem is, especially some of my black people out there, not all, but some of my black people, and the problem is y'all keep voting for the same thing. You know, now that vote blue, no matter who, it's got to be dead in 2024. That way of thinking and that thought process got to be dead for black folks, because what is it got us? I damn sure used to live in New York City a long time ago, you know, and I, I remember riding the subways and all that. And I was thinking about the future and back to the future was out then and all that stuff. So I was thinking by the time 2024 got the subway system would be some futuristic type stuff in New York. Not the same old raggedy trains that was uh, from when I was a kid that was new trains then. I was thinking that, you know, we'd be living on some Jetsons type stuff back, back then. But our government, in a lot of ways, bureaucracy in our government won't allow that. They take money, allocate funds for infrastructure, and that money never gets to the infrastructure for whatever reason. <laughs> Crooks. But... I just wanted to review this video with y'all and see what y'all thought about Stephen A. <laughs> they call us, I said Stephen A. Trump. <laughs> Let's go. Stephen A. Smith show right here over the digital airways of YouTube. Let me move on to some of you annoying asses and just get this out the way. And obviously, I'm talking about Donald Trump. I was a guest on Fox News' Sean Hannity show last night to discuss the upcoming election, the trial, and Trump. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. That's probably what the main problem was, <laughs> that he went on Fox News and talked to Sean Hannity. So, oh, right then and there. You, you can't do that. You really can't do that. You can't go on Fox News and... <laughs> and talk to your liberal buddies. They're going to be mad at you. <laughs> but that's what some of the premise of it was, too. I forgot to give you all that context, too. But let's continue. Some people weren't happy about what I had to say. Take a listen. But I got to tell you something. As much as people may have been abhorred by Donald Trump's statement weeks ago, talking about how black folks, he's hearing that black folks find him relatable because what he's going through is similar to what black Americans have gone through. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. When you see the law, law enforcement, the court system and everything else being exercised against him, it is something that black folks throughout this nation can relate to with some of our historic, iconic figures. We've seen that happen throughout society. So no matter what race, what ethnicity you may emanate from, we relate to you when you're suffering like that because we know we have. And that's what he articulated. Needless to say, people were in a tizzy over that. And why were they in a tizzy over that exactly? Because it's being portrayed and misconstrued that I'm saying that Trump's plight relates to black people. Well, it's easy to take things out of context, which is why I love having my own platform so I can remedy and correct some of the foolhardiness that's put out there. First things first, Sean Hannity asked me the question about Trump gaining traction with the black vote and how whether it's a couple of points or three points or four points that it could end up tilting the election in his favor that's upcoming this November. Yes, he's the presumptive GOP nominee. Yes, he's on trial for a hush money case to a porn star. 
Yes, he recently lost the civil suit for $454 million, where he had to pay about $170 <laughs> now, that is a funny thing. Shout out to Kwame Brown. Shout out to Kwame Brown out there <laughs> on these YouTube streets. Uh, he actually talked so much shit about uh, the Stephen A. for trying to uh, <clears throat> uh, talk stuff to him when he was in the, in the league and every draft year or draft season that <laughs> I guess Stephen A. Smith uh, took his advice and got his own YouTube channel <laughs> so he could have his own opinion. I guess, because, you know, uh, the powers that be are over at ESPN and Disney, they ain't going to let you talk like uh, like you want to talk. So I guess he had to make that move. Let's continue. The five million or something like that up front, okay? Yes. The man has had four indictments against them, 91 counts against them. Still running, though. Still a presumptive GOP nominee, though. And by the way, as I pointed out, has gained traction and is ahead of the incumbent, President Joe Biden, in at least five polls. Not all of the polls, but at least five polls have Trump ahead. Now, before I go a bit further, getting into us, us as black people, because we know how we can be now, okay? Not all, not some of us, but I'm just talking about some of us from our community. We know how the hell we could be. We're going to have that conversation in just a second. But before I get to that, I love how y'all pick apart me on Hannity. I was on Cuomo on News Nation an hour earlier. I ain't hear nothing about that. I was on MSNBC at least twice over the last month. I ain't hear nothing about that. I was on CNN. Abby Phillips, Laura Cut. Well, see, Stephen A., you should know right then and there. That's what they're telling you. They're telling you, you don't go over to Fox News, boy. We don't like that. You go to all our outlets, but you don't go to no Fox News. And damn, you know what I'm saying? I damn sure don't get down with Fox News anyway. They turn their back on Trump. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely don't uh, get down with them. Used to, but the the message is clear to you, Stephen A. You didn't fuck that. Coach, several times I ain't nothing about that. Okay, oh Stephen A. Uh, you know, contributor to Fox. I'm no contributor to Fox News. I show up on all the networks. I was on Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. I'm sorry, I ain't, I ain't hear nothing about that. I've repeatedly said. I think Trump will cause civil war in this country. I, I can't vote for the brother. Y'all just going to ignore that. Why am I bringing all of this stuff up? Because the second black folks find somebody from our community that doesn't march 100% lockstep with one another, they are sellout. They just say that. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Oh. This is getting ridiculous. Okay? Trump is winning. Y'all just going to stand still? I'm wrong when I sit up there and I say, yo, Democrats, all you got is the 80, so soon to be 82-year-old incumbent? You didn't have anything in the bullpen? I'm wrong for bringing that up. I'm wrong for bringing up why the hell you had Gavin Newsom on Fox News looking like he's running for president instead of Joe Biden being the president or Kamala Harris being the vice Cop of the plea now. You got to cop a plea now. You see, it wasn't a problem when I was doing this. Why y'all got a problem with me, man? This is some bull. This is some bull. I'm just trying to tell y'all that Trump didn't win. I still like Democrats. I'm still going to vote for Biden. I may hold my nose and hope vote for him. But, uh, damn. You know, Cut me a break with all this, this Trump stuff, man. Vice President, I'm wrong for bringing that up. I'm wrong for bringing up when I went off about Kamala Harris, our Vice President, our HBCU grad from Howard University, a black woman, highly intelligent, former Attorney General in the city of San Francisco, former Attorney General in the state of, North, of California. I was wrong for bringing up how 
She was wrong to avoid getting into it with then presidential candidate Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, when he wanted to debate her on the good parts of slavery. I was wrong. I was wrong about that. I was wrong to say she should have. That's a fight she should have embraced. When y'all going to wake up? I'm wrong when I'm pointing out how black folks for the first time are talking about the borders being flooded. How illegal immigration ultimately negatively affects us. I'm wrong. I'm wrong in pointing out how xenophobia, homophobia, trans. Of course you're wrong, boy. You ain't supposed to tell them that. Don't you know that? <laughs> oh, man. But <clears throat> I definitely think in my personal opinion that uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, <laughs> as loud and bombastic as he is, he got a team behind him. Team check analytics and see which way the political wave is going. And I think that this is uh, Stephen A.'s way of trying to get a whole get ahead of them political wins we'll see if he still keeps this same energy in september of how he's talking to democrats see if you know see if you'll notice a change by september or october of how he feels about the democrats and their chances to win an election like he, and compared to how he's talking now that's how i'll tell but I just think he, you know, saying he he got a little political voice now on his own YouTube channel, and he gets the voice's opinion. So I think uh, he really does believe that Democrats will play fair to win the election. <laughs> He's sadly mistaken on that one. <laughs> Democrats are, are not playing fair, will not play fair, and will continue to rob steal or kill for what they want, which is raw power over all of us. Transphobia has all of a sudden become bigger issues than racism in this country. I mean, damn, how much proof do you need? When I brought up the economy, they say the economy is good. They oh, and let's not forget about the establishment rhinos too. They're no better. So, you know, saying when you're saying drain the swamp, it's a whole massive swamp that Trump's got to fight against. And you see what he's going through. And I think, like I said, they thought that they would bury Trump under all these charges, all these bogus charges, really. But in the past, that political, if you look back at, at politics over the years, you will see that this this particular strategy is a winning strategy. All you do is make allegations. You you make one allegation, then you make another allegation, then you have uh, four or five or six allegations, and but and, and put all that them stories in the press. And by the time the uh, pressure came, or the political pressure came, or the threat of anything that looked nefarious, a political candidate a political candidate would step down right away, immediately. Trump's even said this before some of his rallies that, you know, uh, any, anybody else would have talked to him and went home uh, to mommy. And I believe he's right. You know, like I said, uh, I think that how does it want to be? They want to crush Trump so bad that when you see him in public that he looks physically broken mentally broken and drained and for eight years maybe more <laughs> they haven't succeeded at doing that <laughs> and it seems like he gets stronger every time that they shoot shots at him and i definitely think the Democrats and liberals are in panic mode right now. But don't be fooled by all this panic mode and panic talk because they will still they will steal it. And I, I stand on that. They will steal it. I, I'm not overconfident this time.
because it's, it's a lot of the same problems going on at the FBI and the Department of Justice that you can't get rid of these high level people that's been there for years and always seem to have their people right up under them so they get promoted. So if you get rid of one swamp creature, for whatever reason, it gets uh, you, you appoint the next swamp creature. So I don't know. I think you need to rethink our whole political thinking process when you get elected as a president and in terms of putting these people in these positions because for a lot of years the bureaucracy will fester and it makes it to where they make the decisions not the heads of those departments and then definitely at that at one time not the head of the free world the president of the united states how can you be the president and you're not in charge? Somebody else is telling you what to do. That's kind of crazy to me. But until Trump, I don't think we have one. But Stephen A's definitely sounding that alarm. He's sounding that alarm. He's sounding that alarm. Let's go. They say the economy is flourishing. You try to tell me you black and you don't you disagree with me when i say to us we don't want to hear about the numbers oh the rate labor participation rate is good oh unemployment is good oh the economy is okay if gas prices are damn near double what it used to be if the price of bread milk cheese and every eggs and everything in between is double what it used to be but we ain't getting raises at work you trying to tell me i was wrong for bringing that up you trying to tell me I'm wrong when you're sitting up there and you're talking about and subjects like immigrants in New York City getting fifty three million dollar prepaid credit cards to subsidize their existence in this country. And I'm pointing out how that was never done for black people. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That's where we really want to go. That's what game we playing. I ain't talking politics. I'm talking life. I don't give a damn that I'm inundated with sports all day, every day. I'm a human being. I'm a black man. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. You don't see this shit happening? Oh. I'm supposed to just sit alley by and say nothing? (laughs) The hell with me talking. Why ain't you talking? Why ain't you screaming to the high heavens? Why aren't you telling liberals on the left, yo, you need to stop with the extreme leftist stuff on the fridges with all of that woke stuff. What sex you are, whether you are male or female, whether you can be a a, a male, but call yourself a female and get to compete against women or girls in various sports. You want those issues to be more prevalent than the stuff going on in our community that directly affects our lives as opposed to less than 1% of the damn population? What you doing? How come you ain't doing it? How come you ain't raising raising holy hell? How come you not speaking up? And by the way, to get specific, when I brought up Trump and whatever relation he has with black folks, the question that was asked to me was the supporters of Trump. Why are they doing so? I said, black folks want to be safe in the streets of America. They don't want to see somebody committing crimes, assault or whatever, and go, getting arrested and being out of jail in the same day. I said, black folks want to make money and they want to keep money in their pocket. They want to be safe. That's what I said. And I also said this. I said, yo. Our criminal justice system, our courts, law enforcement, that anytime we see anybody that we deem to be an individual being persecuted, where the law is being exercised against them, the heavy hand of the law, do we find that relatable to some degree? Yes. I'm lying about that? Really? Really? I'm lying about that, huh? Which I think is an insult to black people too. They that uh, to say that we don't believe in law and order, and we don't believe in wanting safety for our and security for our children or grandchildren. I think that's a slap in the face to every black person out there because, of course, you want safety and security. 
but in an offhanded way, that's the liberals' way of of saying that black people can deal with crime. <laughs> Ooh, Malcolm X told us a long time ago. Rest in peace. Didn't happen to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Didn't happen to Malcolm X. Didn't happen to Al Sharpton, damn it. Didn't happen to a plethora of black folks throughout our history. When all else failed, the heavy hand of law enforcement, of the courts, of laws, ultimately rained down upon them. When we talk about recidivism, when we talk about our incarceration rate, don't we sit up there and talk, and talk about how we need to get the laws changed because folks are being criminalized for the, the, the most innocuous of things? Remember we had those conversations? Then we talk about the crime bill in the 90s when people were being thrown in jail. And Stephen A. found out that he was sold a bill of goods by the Democrats and they really don't give a goddamn about black people. And any anybody that's going through our situations in some of the areas where black people are heavily populated, he's finally figured out they sold him a bill of goods on that. And I think he's figured it out that they they really not for them. They're not for us. And you know what I'm saying. That's what he's he trying to say. Didn't we used to talk about this stuff? Oh, because uh, Trump's running. All that go out the window. Ain't that what's happening? Please, y'all. Stop being mean to me. <laughs> nah, I ain't going to keep messing with Stephen A. But he was trying to keep it real with black pe people and tell them, well, you know, he asked the question, why was black people supporting Trump? And he was honest. And telling the truth. In 2024, is not looked upon in a favorable way. Let's put it that way. Well, at an exorbitant amount out of our community because of non-violent offenses. Didn't we hear the now president apologize for his role in leading that charge when he was the head of the Senate? Didn't we hear Clinton apologize when his wife was running for the presidency? I'm making this up, though. I'm making this up. I'm sorry for locking all y'all black people up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill Clinton. I'm sorry. I signed the bill to lock all these black folks up. But put us back in office again. One more again. Run it back. Please. Would you please? <laughs> you don't see the parallel? You don't see the connection. Why you think Trump went out there and he said, hey, what were his words? I've been told. Go. Those were his words. I've been told. I've heard that black some black folks. Find themselves somewhat relatable to me because of what I'm going through right now. And where will we get that from? You know, good and damn well. Georgia case is another matter. On the phone, I need 11,000 votes, 11,700 votes. That's an egregious situation for the president to find himself in. We ain't talking about that. They're really trying to harp on that because he made a phone call and said he's looking for 11,000 votes. He's seen uh, some of the votes shouldn't have been certified, but that was. And they've been trying to do that. So when they try to fool you with this, oh, uh, he he tried to he tried to interfere in election in a certifying of election. Man, people spare me that. They tried to do all kinds of stuff before Trump got officially in office and back in that day. So spare me that. Well, a lot of people that remember, I, I guess our attention spans are short as a as the human race because a lot of people forget what they were trying to do before uh, Trump got sworn in. They was pulling all kinds of stuff to try to not to get that uh, man certified and get that election results and to get him sworn in. Everything. And then uh, Hillary Clinton contesting the election. 
So contesting the election is nothing new. And calling somebody and asking about 11,000 votes, because that's all you needed to win. People do that all the time. So don't let the media fool you with that's some kind of crime. And for them to go Rico in Georgia over that too, come on. I think uh, with people's uh, desire and ambition to be famous or to reach some certain status, I think they were sold a bill of goods to go after Trump. Pawns, if you will. And it's sad to, to you know, to see the Leticia James, Fannie Willis, Alvin Bragg, three black people. Now, if something goes wrong with this ca these cases, who do you think that's going to fall on? It's already trouble for Fannie because she they didn't they probably didn't know that she was sleeping with the dude. So her punishment is going to be now that they they had noticed that the DOJ is now looking at her. But before it was hands off until all this stuff came into the light. So I think her punishment for messing up this case will be that getting investigated and looked at by the Department of Justice. Now, that makes it imperative for her to get a conviction. Just like the same thing in New York. But I think these things are going to backfire anyway. <laughs> I really do. And even if they did convict them and get a conviction, I think the people will love them even more, give them even more credibility. He already got he already got more street cred than any politician in history. <laughs> oh man. You wouldn't catch Joe Biden dead in Harlem. I bet. But we ain't talking about the civil case where he lost the 454 million, had a 454 million judgment against him either. You real estate and you manufacture, you're a real estate mogul and you manufacturing numbers. Okay, wow. We know that's going to happen. And you do the crime, you get caught, you got to pay the penance or you got to do the time. But you're the former president of the United States. Hey, hey, oh, yeah, oh, oh. What's that? And your ass is in court where you have to show up each day. Otherwise, you're going to be thrown in jail. And the crime is that you took $130,000 of money and through your lawyer or some other intermediary, you gave it to a porn star for hush money purposes. So he got loose with a porn star and he didn't want the world to know why he was running for president that he did that. And so he tried to wiggle his way through. And they put a gag order on him and made it where he couldn't even go to his son's graduation. That's heartless right there. That's cold blooded right there. A high school graduation only happened once, man. And they've done them dirty, man, where he can't go to see Baron graduate. That's some dirty stuff. I bought too. I bought and paid the fine. Put me in jail. That'll give me more credit. I'm telling you, I'd probably buck if it was me. I'd go. You know what I'm saying? He got enough money to pay a fine. And I think it, it'd probably be a, a political nuclear bomb if Trump went into jail for like a night. <laughs> at the Secret Service and everything in, in jail. <laughs> look at the look at that. Oh, my God. That would be a nuclear bomb for the Democrats. So I kind of hope he do it. Who that? You trying to tell me that America is sitting up there? I'm talking about independence and folks on the right. Of course, people who hate him on the left are going to take that position. But I'm talking about independence and folks on the right. You trying to tell me they think this is a serious matter that requires our time and attention? John Edwards, did he do time? Gary Hart, did he do time? Bill Clinton... They said he got loose in the Oval Office. I heard libertarians losing their damn mind. He was in the Oval Office. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Remember that? 
But we, but, but he in court. Instead of being on the campaign trail, you don't think people see through that? They do. All I did was point it out. I am not a fan of Trump being the president. I think he will cause civil war in this country because I don't think he's going to cater to all of the American people. I think he's just going to cater to people who fear, who are, 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 who voted for him and who are loyal to him and the rest of us be damned. That's how I view him. But that doesn't mean I get to close my eyes and be completely oblivious and ignorant to the stuff the Democrats are doing to lose the damn election. I said it before. Now I have to question when they, they always pump about a civil war, a civil war. You know, what are they talking about? They've been trying to pump this for about 50 years now. So a new civil war is, is, is going to happen. You know, I believe if Trump gets elected again, they said that the first time that he got in office that he was going to create a civil war. No, they paid Antifa to go on the loose. And they was trying to create anarchy under the Trump presidency. That's what they did. But in terms of a civil war where Americans fighting Americans over whatever, I don't see that happening ever again. Now, I can see Americans bucking to illegal immigration, especially when they start going in certain neighborhoods. I can start seeing that. I can see that happening. And you can't call that a civil war because those are not American citizens whether you choose to believe or not. That's why I'm glad black folks are finally saying, hell no, uh, they figured out, oh, the legal immigration is not good for me. I'm glad. I'm glad we figured that one out, that that's not good. And hell, the, uh, everybody else that came here legally is not happy about illegal immigration. So to say that it's a good thing, and they always used to try to use the media to trick us into saying we're all immigrants here. We're all immigrants. Especially uh, for my brothers and sisters out there, you've been here. I've said that numerous times if you uh, check some of my videos out. We've been here. They didn't bring you on no goddamn ship. That's one of the biggest lies ever told. in my opinion, but that's one of the biggest lies that ever told that you wasn't from here and somebody else brought you here. You've been here. You showed them what to do with it long before they knew what to do with it. That's why everybody, every explorer that came here called it the new world because they couldn't believe the stuff that was going on and all the people that was doing it was black. But they wiped them near most of those people out. And the ones that did survive and kept kicking their butt, they just had to adapt to survive. But make no mistake, we've been here. And make no mistake, black people, I believe truly you you have to we have to shed that slave mentality. If anything, you was the original slave master here on these lands and abroad. So sometimes we got to look in the mirror. There's a lot of history that wasn't written down. I've said that before numerous times, too. So if you were the original man, you have to be the original sinner. In my opinion, like I said, while we cry about 400 some years plus of slavery, it's possible we have people under thousands of years of slavery. That's why they had to put us at the bottom of the barrel. They had to put us at the bottom of the barrel and never let you know your history. Never let you know your history. So you always be searching for something that's not there. Damn, we have no knowledge itself. We really don't. They did us. Enough. They they drew us for a loop on that. We don't know whether we're coming or going as a people. 
But I can tell you the history that they told us that was our history. I don't believe it for one bit. For, and I say it again, beat him. Beat him. Get a bullpen. Have some other candidates. Find folks with pizzazz that can talk to the American people and resonate. Don't act. I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm saying from an impression, from a perspective matter, don't act like what you're doing is you want the president to get through the election. And then after that, damn it, God rest his soul, he can end up passing away or something and Kamala Harris can become president that way. No, you want to be president, run for it. Beat him. Show that you can compete. That's what we got to do in anything we do in life. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You want to come at me? Feel free. Ain't nobody running. Ain't nobody hiding. Don't have nothing to do with sports. Don't have nothing to do with politics. It's got everything to do with me. I'm Stephen A, baby. I'm who the hell I am. I ain't here to make friends nor enemies. But I'm going to give you the truth as I see it. Because I'm living in this world. I'm paying taxes. I'm paying bills. I'm living life. I see some of the things that's going on. And I don't agree with everything. I don't agree with a lot of stuff on the right. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I, I can't, I, I don't even want to hear from this woman again. Oh my God, how does she have a, a, an elected seat? How is she a legislator? Later. A legislator. How? Make me wonder about some of those folks down there in Georgia. But there's a host of Republicans I would have voted for. I would have voted for John Kasich. I'd have voted for Chris Christie. Without question. I would have voted for Nikki Haley. Yes, I would have. Because I don't like what I'm seeing. But I'm the same dude that voted for Obama. And Gore. And Kerry. And that's the other problem, too. Who we like. I've said that before. Because I don't like what I'm seeing. It's not about what you like. It's about what the person does. And if the policies affect you in a good way, then that's what you should be voting for, not just because you like somebody. We've done enough of that, don't you think? And where the hell did that get us? And Clinton. Hell, I voted for Dukakis. Come on. At some point, how much can you take? How many years are we supposed to hear Armageddon is arriving? Oh, my God, if you vote for this guy, the world is over. We'll never recover. Well, H.W. was in office. We recovered. W. was in office. We recovered. Trump was in office. We recovered. At some point in time, it ain't about how awful the other person is. That shouldn't be your claim to fame. It should be what you bring it to the table. I wish I could have played in the NBA. My scrub ass, I just need to find a, another scrub that's worse than me so I can go out there representing the NBA uniform. That's going to make your eyes more appealing to the product if Stephen A was playing in the NBA instead of LeBron or somebody. Wake the hell up. Show what you made of. Instead of, of engaging in fear mongering and demagoguery to get your way. Win, damn it. Last point. Trump is busting y'all ass. That's what he's doing. He better end up in cuffs. He better end up behind bars. He better end up in a zebra suit. The last thing you want is on election night for Trump to still be the GOP nominee and it comes down between him and Biden because what it will mean is that you've been talking all of this stuff, Russian collusion and everything else, all these years and still couldn't touch him. That ain't Stephen A's fault. That's y'all's because y'all chirped and didn't get it done. I'm not rooting against liberals. I'm not rooting against Democrats. I'm saying you're defeating yourselves and I'm tired of watching you do it. There's a difference. You're going to quote me on something. Quote me on that. I swear. My boy says it best sometimes. Sometimes. 
I can't hang with y'all. I just can't. <laughs> now, <Nah>. yeah. <laughs> LegalZoom makes it simple to, to start an LLC in three easy steps. I definitely had to bring that to y'all uh, and comment on Stephen A. Definitely copping a plea <laughs> for telling the people the truth. But the people needed to hear the truth, especially from the Democrat side. It's, it's some rational Democrats out there. I know that. They just have no power and they're not in the media. The media is not going to give those kind of Democrats no power. That's that's just how they roll. They're not going to do that for you. You know what I'm saying? But make no mistake. Democrats are in a panic mode right now, and they'll do whatever they have to do to win this election. I just hope that they can stop the steal. Hell, we can stop the steal in my own little way. I guess we're getting the word out there. Stop the steal. Because that right about now, on the policies alone, Trump will uh, beat some hands down. He'll beat Biden hands down. But they want to destroy him, his family, and his business and make him an example so that nobody else will try to do what Trump done. But I think that it's too late. You can't get rid of that American spirit that people feel no matter what color they are. They still feel that American spirit within them. That was has been instilled in them. That feels natural to them. And no matter how much they fundamentally, fundamentally try to change America, Americans, true Americans are gonna stand up for what's right. And it's a crazy world and crazy times that we're living in right now. But where else would you rather be? <laughs> no doubt. But I wanted to know what y'all thought about this video. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. And it's your boy, Chris B. I'll get back with you with another one. Peace. I'm out.